say it's during the same way to watching Superman and Lois season 2 episode 12 Lies That Bind. So ready for this episode, this show is fantastic and it just keeps getting better. Reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon one month in advance. And let's go! You're Superman? Mm-hmm. Kinda. You saved us. Yeah. Couldn't let my friends get hurt. I did get hurt. When you left. You vanished almost right after that night. It's so interesting, isn't it? Because, like, in so many ways this makes all of her life makes sense. So many questions she would have had about her childhood or whatever that didn't make sense make sense. But it also kind of would have hurt her a little bit because he ultimately left and chose to go and become Superman. And it's a weird kind of pain because so much time has passed since then. She doesn't still cry herself to sleep over it like she would have done when she was 15, 16, however old they were supposed to be. You know, she's currently going through a much worse heartbreak with her husband. Um, but that first heartbreak, that first pain always is with you. I was angry. And he finally gets to be honest with her about it. Did you ever love me? Of course he did. You were his first love. Uh, of course I did. But these are enough. Oof. Right. Some questions that she's been holding back since she was that young. I gotta go. Yeah. I feel like it also kind of stirred up a lot of that old pain, which will be even rawer now because she's currently going through the adult version of that kind of pain, but she'll get through it. She'll understand. I mean, Lana very much wanted the small town life. Maybe, and maybe she wanted more and she didn't have another choice, but it seemed to Clark, at least, that Lana wanted the small town life, small town life and he needed to go off and find himself. When he met Lois, she was already kind of running around dealing with the same problems he was dealing with as Superman just from the paper and it kind of made sense for them to come together and for him to tell her the truth and it's only now that the children are older that he has decided he wants small town life too so I think he and Lana might have worked if he wasn't Superman if he was just bumbling Clark Kent mm. but that isn't who he is he has both sides to him we'll and Lana will understand no it's gonna take Lana a little while to wrap her head around this yeah her whole world will make sense. It makes some things better, it makes some things worse. It is a huge deal. I'm just so glad he told her and it wasn't that she found hey, out. She's coming. What's up, guys? So, uh, Ken. Mm. Have you figured out a way to get the baseball season cancelled yet? Besides, this guy was literally huffing mm -hmm. all that stuff than I was. Maybe. But do you think any of this matters? Do you think football matters? Do you think Aww. baseball matters? I think even high school matters. All of it's meaningless. Uh, John. Okay. Uh, he's... Even though it's about to be the end of the world as we know it. Uh, he just started following Greta Thunberg Teenagers. on Twitter. Teenagers. What's that? It's nothing. It's fine. I know, but you are I'm... definitely not fine. He's We're not just totally fine. what you've been through, but... I like this kind of sibling oh, weird... They're kind of like cousins. Did you on your first day back? <gasps> Bad kid vibes from Nar Jonathan and Aunt Natalie. I kind of feel like they're not siblings and they never will be but I could kind of see Natalie, Jonathan and Jordan becoming cousins because there are some cousins who don't grow up together who don't necessarily have a close bond when they're younger and they can still meet each other when they're older. Obviously the same is true of siblings but I still am kind of viewing Lois as sort of being like a long lost twin sister of Natalie's mother because she's not the same person. Should I'll take it for a spin? Actually we didn't get a chance. Something else happened. Why not? It's one of her first real tests of do you tell people the truth? Bye. She's now seeing the weight of what it is to have the secret. And like, yeah, he's not somebody that she's going to want to spend any time with right now and spill everything. But normally, she'd have at least talked about what they got up to with Sarah. Or she'd have said, well, you know, I would have done it, but I got kidnapped by a crazy psychopath person and it was a whole thing. Um, Sarah did love the car, though. You know, she kind of would have been a little bit more open with him. Now, maybe not given their current circumstances, she might have just said, Oh yeah, no, Sarah loved the car, she just drove it herself, you know, it was her big day, I didn't want to rain on it. Talk to her about it, kind of, would have been a way for her to stay through the conversation without prolonging their contact if she doesn't feel up to it. But she's kind of experiencing firsthand what it is to want to scream at the world, Clark Kent is Superman, I have this huge secret, oh my god, my whole world view has shifted, but she's not going to do that, it's very interesting. And she's still trying to process it for herself. In fact, we have the best support system over there. He wants to try and parent yeah, him. Deserve better. So he does. A lot of bad choices. Precisely. This is exactly right. The ones that cost people their lives. And that's on you. Exactly. Help me save your world. And mine. Ooh. Help me stop Allie. Maybe. 
You still have a mother and brother. Whatever. She's gonna fix the world. No, she isn't. She really is an idiot child. Because I have the pendant. It prevents Allie's followers from coming here, but it also keeps us from getting back there. You're he is a true hero. All the innocent people whose lives are being destroyed by Allie. They have no one left over there to protect them. It would be very them. easy to just focus on Please. your own earth. Clark, I have to try. Yeah, of course. Don't say of course, like you know what I'm talking about. Of course sure. she does. I understand. Are you sure? Because you seem kind of mad. I'm mad at you. Me? When you moved to Smallville, we didn't have to become friends. We could have been neighborly, waving hello at the bus stop. But Ooh. you sought me out. You've become the person that I call. Mm. And this whole time, you've been keeping this huge secret from she me. She had to. A secret to share. So you've made me a liar too. So they're kind of... I do understand that human emotions you can't really control and that she's angry, she's going to be angry. It's very mature and evolves like a grown woman to not be mad at Clark, especially given that the majority of Clark's life happened when he was younger. But like, why is she this mad at Lois? Because what was Lois supposed to do? Move to Smallville and have zero contact with any other human beyond a cursory hello? She wasn't meant to have a single friend? She wasn't meant to talk to anyone? If she's been there for you when you needed her, if she's told you the truth in every single other aspect of her life, you know, told you when she had a fight with Clark or told you when the boys are frustrating her and she needed mum advice, which she has, then your friendship is true. You can be hurt and upset and a bit angry that she didn't tell you that there was this huge secret and why did you become my friend? But I love that Lana was like, I put myself in Clark's shoes and I can't blame him. I will not put myself in your shoes, Lois. <laughs> it's just weird <laughs> because similarly if you put yourself in lois's shoes was she supposed to have zero human contact with anybody outside of her family for the rest of time so that the secret didn't come between her and other people or was she supposed to make friends and hi nice to meet you my husband's superman can we meet can we be friends like again emotions aren't rational and this is happening to lana right in the middle of a separation from her husband who cheated on her her brain is not necessarily going to be making the most rational emotional judgments but it's just a very interesting one for me but what i love about this show is it's not afraid to have the characters make decisions and do things and have emotional reactions that aren't the best and that maybe don't make the most logical sense because emotions aren't logical but i'm just looking at lana here and being like yeah i kind of get that you're just feeling a lot of feelings about this and you need to put those feelings somewhere lois is the most random place it's almost like there's too much history with clark clark was young when a lot of it happened but clark has moved back to town clark has lied to your face clark has lied to your face as superman and as himself you know wait till she finds out her daughter was dating a boy with developing superpowers he was learning to control um but the kind of you've made me a liar too technically clark did that because if clark had continued to lie to you then you wouldn't be a liar because you wouldn't know again emotions aren't rational but i do feel that was a little uncalled for don't you feel like our parents still view us all as little kids you are little kids so i decided but to at their age they think they're not but they are it's always an if with you isn't there yes you because you killed people First step to building that kind of relationship please it saved your life and it still wasn't enough yes because you killed people possible. because it's not you i have to convince is it you killed people you led to their death you caused their death you were intending to wipe out humanity like that isn't something that we can just be like oh you've changed your mind and you're being nice now because you didn't change your mind until you were defeated and had literally no other options I'd love for them to have a brotherly relationship. I think that would be wonderful for Clark. But come on now. It's not like Calvaro did nothing wrong ever. And oh, he just was a little bit bad. Yes, he was manipulated by his father, but he still made those choices when there were others available to him. No. Hello, Lois. Oh. I don't agree with this. I don't even a little bit agree with this, Clark. I know you want your brother back, and I know we need his help, but he shouldn't be out of prison to come for a family visit. If he really wishes to speak to Lois, she could be brought to him, although I suppose there'll be a lot of eyes and ears um, to hear that she was his wife. But uh, I don't... I just, a lot of shows do this. They have someone who is a big bad, and then after a couple of seasons, they're just a mate that we hang out with. 
and yeah that can work in certain shows especially shows where sometimes maybe the morals aren't quite black and white and not that the morals are black and white in this show but superman very much stands up for all that is good and right and him just casually forgiving the big bad from last season and wanting him to come for sleepovers at the house is a bit much um now if he wants a relationship with his brother wherein clark goes and hangs out with him from time to time we can arrange that i just what is what is the plan here because just listen to lois i'm not expecting you to forgive me okay cuffs are good but i was convinced that if i fulfilled his dreams then my own might also come true that i may see this seems genuine but, but given his past actions i don't I no know already had a family of his own and like i i don't you over me know that we could ever trust that this was sincere I hadn't wasted so much time doing someone else's bidding, I might have found a family here. Yeah. You. Yeah. We'll never know. But you can no. trust me, Lois, when I tell you I will never hurt anyone you love again. What about anyone good or innocent, full stop? Dooming an entire civilization to a merciless god is hardly a choice. You of all people should know that. I'm sorry, Clark. I know he's your brother, but that doesn't mean we can trust him. I'm not asking you uh -huh. to trust him. I'm asking you to trust me. Clark. I think Clark is somewhat influenced by seeing the brotherly bond that he did have on the other world because he's like, it's in there, and maybe we could have the same thing here. Maybe that is who um, Talro is at his core. I, I still just think, given all the choices he made last season when he had other options to make, that was a very evolved, mature response, but. I don't think we can just trust him at the same time. I don't think having the response of well, we just cannot use him or trust him at all is the right answer either. Like, oh, it's a mess. Give me another lecture on not interfering in adult situations. Because you're a child. Yeah. Kids I thinking they're grown. More than your mom always just, uh... mm, It's not really your place to know anymore. I don't know, maybe, I mean... Unless it affects your kids. Six hour walk. Oh, what are you going to cause a cave-in? Oh no, oh no. Oh no. Oh, children. What have we done, children? Oh, children. Look at our baby boy go. Family bonding. But it's kind of my goal, right? So, give it to me. Thank you. Healthy coping mechanisms, so, hey, plus you know, was, wonderful, talented steps forward. About uh, this walk that she went on, you think that she was with someone? Fuck off! Huh? You do not get to talk to your teenage daughter about whether or not your wife is moving on from you after you cheated on her. You can talk to a friend. You can talk to one of your mates if you have any of those. You do not talk to your teenage daughter about whether or not your mum is moving on with somebody else and planting that idea in her head, which is not something, whether it's happening or not, is between her and Lana, not with you. Fuck off. Here I was thinking, well, he's been such a good dad. Like, 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 is your mum dating someone already? I don't know, I have no idea. If you want to talk to mom about her personal life, then do it. You do not get to have yeah, this conversation with Sarah. Kind of break up. I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you should be. Right. Wait, what the hell just happened? How is she here? I'm... And she is clearly not That's very well merged. Like. Yeah, doesn't look very whole to me. Ellie's got the pendant. We have to stop her before she gets to the portal. Although... Again, I'm very mistrusting. I'm like, Tal Tally is down. Potentially, you know, God knows what just happened to the man. Was he just forcibly merged or something? Or did she just drain some light balls from him? Who knows? But also, Tal is unrestrained and alone and could run. And my brain does not fully trust this man. Oh, Given Fire his plans. Does she, like, absorb some of their strength or something? Yeah, you're not even a human or a person, so you having fun with being a god? <laughs> I liked that scream. <laughs> they did it! Oof. What did I say? 
I mean, the best case scenario here is that he's going to try and prove himself, prove his loyalty, save the day, and maybe we could vaguely begin to trust him, but I still think, like, anyone that had the plan to eradicate humanity and was totally cool with it, murdered people along the way, really should stay in prison. Everything is fine. Is she going to tell her or just, uh, understand what it's like to have to keep the secret? Kind of a big deal, and I want to share it with you. I'll be there in a second. Make sure Sophie's not listening. Gosh, she's growing up so fast. Um, no, your mom knows the feeling. I'm sorry, mom. What were you saying? Oh, she's uh, not. Yeah. Uh, uh, she knows what it's like now to keep up the lie. It's very sweet the way they're bonding. Okay, but we can always go back tomorrow. Uh, what's happening here? Huh. You know, just bonding. Family bonding. Family. <laughs> I like, like that. that. They're like cousins. Oh, cool. And I'm not mad at either of you. Good. I'm really happy to hear that. She kind of seen what it's like to have I the also secret. I can't have you in my life right now. And well, that makes sense too. My kids a clean break. It's very, very well, hard. Please. But for I'm now, sorry, but that's just the way it has to give be her happen. time. I'm not here to meet your old. Uncle. No, uh, no, 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 you're not. Look, she doesn't even work here anymore. Fucking hell. She, uh, why not launch the next big thing right here in Smallville? Dad, I'm not the next big thing. Oh, but that's the goal. Springing on her is a bit harsh. Why do you gotta start somewhere? Okay, there genuinely was a moment there where I thought he was gonna hook up and have a revenge hookup. I still hate him in general. <laughs> I still hate him. I'm still absolutely furious with this man for the choices he's made. And for the fact that he then was asking his teenage daughter, who was clearly going through a lot, is your mom dating? Is your mom dating? It's not her business to be dealing with that shit. It's yours. Cleared everything. Why don't you just get up there and show them what you got? Hmm? Because it's a bar full of weird adults. She doesn't have to. I mean, I, she'll obviously be a brilliant, amazing, wonderful person, but like, this is a bar full of somewhat drunk adults. It's also the same bar where my dad began to cheat on my mum. This is not where I'd like to perform. These are my songs. She's a brave, brave girl. Love is the way, but that can't be right. I should have listened to my brother. You and yeah. their savior. No, no. She thinks she needs to get stronger to become the saviour. Just admit you were wrong. And you destroyed your own life, love. It's alright. Happens to the best of us. So one of my absolute favourite things with this show is that even though it is a show that is about Superman and he's flying around and you're super the sun and the big bads, they still really manage to make the characters feel down to earth believable real they don't always act perfectly they often fuck up but they always most of them their hearts are in the right place and they're trying to do the right thing you know i'm fuming at kyle for cheating i'm fuming at him for lying about it i'm fuming at him for every single thing that happened in this he has behaved shittily multiple times since and even now in this episode talking to sarah about whether or not lana was dating somebody that's not something you talk about with your teenage daughter now maybe that is something you talk about with her a few years down the line or some time down the line when it's but you just in general you don't do it with your 15 year old kid yeah 15 that's i was like she turned 15 or 16 she turned 15 didn't she you don't do it with a kid that young um or with a kid at any point once you separate as parents the relationship between each parent and child should be totally detached from each other now obviously in reality it is a lot easier to say that than to do it so as much as i'm hating kyle i think he's a very believable character men women who have done what he's done act like he's done they do the same things he's doing they ask their kids about things when they shouldn't they go around to their ex-wife like be my friend you know they do all those kind of things that like you really shouldn't do um because that's he he feels real and even lana's response from initially just walking away from Clark, from being furious at lois to then realizing i know what it's like to have this secret and to not want to put it on somebody else and to kind of see things from their point of view because she'd also lived that experience and then to also just need space again is it the happily ever after ending that we'd all be dreaming of no and I'm not criticising the other Arrowverse shows, but I feel like the nature of those shows was very much about the soup. This, the prime part of those shows was the superhero-ness. The fact that Barry had to run off and save the day or whatever. Or that um, 
Oliver had to not support a strike. You know, those were the key parts of the episode, of the plot. And although there was family stuff, it was often squeezed in alongside the main plot. Whereas the nature of this show is that there are both things are you see. It's Superman and Lois's life. It is their day-to-day -day life. Their kids are involved, everything is involved. And so I feel like the characters feel like people you could meet on the street. You could walk into your local library pick up the book oh I like that book too and become friends with I, I've never done that in my life but you know you could meet these people on the streets and it would be real they feel much for more kind of real people and that isn't a criticism because the other shows with the other shows it's a kind of a different take on the genre if that makes sense um I'm very glad Lana knows the truth now they're able to go to her and tell the truth I hope they've given her one of the ELT thingamajigs um and that moment when she almost told sarah and then she didn't i think it helped her stop being angry at lois because it showed her that it's not her looking at her daughter and thinking oh you poor fragile little delicate flower who's too stupid you couldn't know this it's looking at your daughter and thinking this is a burden knowing this secret is a burden and she'd have to lie to sophie now again i think given that sophie is like eight that wouldn't be the end of the world but she would have lied to sophie she'd have to lie to her dad to her other friends um, the big thing with Sarah is the fact that she's currently going through her first heartbreak and what it boils down to is the fact that his dad is Superman and his powers is the reason he's not always around. So perhaps if she were to know the truth, it would change her outlook. It might, like I've said before, even if she were to find out the truth, she could still decide, well, that's not enough for me. I want to be someone's priority, just that they're my priority. You know, I, I don't want that kind of life. That's, there's nothing wrong with that as long as, you know, you... The problem is if you start a relationship with someone that you know has other commitments that are going to come first and then you get mad about it after the fact. Um, but also Sarah is 15. This secret is a huge burden. It It's bad enough just when the thing last season when you know that her dad was possessed and all that kind of stuff. But at this point, knowing something terrible is going to happen when there's nothing you can do isn't going to help Sarah at all. Knowing about Clark and Jordan and all that kind of stuff, it's just going to add even more weight to her life. Um, so I understand Lana's decision for not telling her. I'm still half convinced Jordan is going to. Um, I, I genuinely don't know, obviously. But yeah, it, it's just, I feel like that moment really helped her realise what it was like for Lois, what it was like for Clark, and why being angry at them didn't make sense. But I also really respect her for saying, look, you know, I don't, I'm not angry at you. I get it. But I also don't want this in my life exactly like what i was saying with sarah this isn't something that i want and you're allowed to put yourself first you're allowed to say this situation isn't healthy for me right now i have to step back you know what would have been wrong would have been if she said you were evil demon people and i hate you i wish we were never friends i loathe you she didn't she just said i don't want to have to feel like i'm lying to my children every time i see you um so let's distance our relationship a little bit made easier by the fact that their children are no longer dating so you know it's not like there is the whole kind of um, oh hi Jordan it, there's this complete separation there as well um, but I don't think it will last forever I do think Lana will come around to being their friend and to understanding maybe Sarah will find out the truth maybe she won't but I do think um, ultimately they are too close to each other and they care about each other too much and the world is about to try and end so yeah now, my favourite part of this episode was definitely the bonding between the cousins. I'm going to call them the cousins, that's my name for them, because they aren't really siblings. Like, biologically, they are half-siblings, but I guess that's technically true of identical twins' kids, right? Like, they're sort of, if it's identical, but they're not. Again, I'm not a genetic, spe genetic specialist. And the way I am looking at this entire thing with Lois and Natalie is that it is not a replacement mother. And obviously no one in the show is trying to say it's a replacement mother. But it's kind of like she found out her mum had an identical twin sister that they were separated at birth and she'd never known. And they are really similar, but they are not the same. Um, and so getting to know her is kind of like getting to know a different aspect of your mother, a little piece of your mother's being connected to your mother, but it isn't a replacement. And in the same way that the kids aren't her brothers, the boys aren't her brothers. And it would be even, it would be even weirder if they had the same dad, but they don't. Like they are, they are cousins of these identical twins, it's kind of how I'm choosing to view this. Um, but they are family. And so I love that when, I love that Natalie used that word. I love just seeing Natalie laugh. I love seeing the boys laugh. They haven't, they've been going through a lot recently. Jonathan in particular, Jordan with his breakup. Just seeing them just be kids. 
be dumb kids. I mean, they, they, they caused a few more of my hairs to turn grey, but just seeing them laugh and refer to each other as family and have like a family dinner was really sweet. It's what Natalie came to Smallville for. And I love that even if things are a little bit strange still between her and Lois and her and Clark, having kind of cousins, having family, having a connection having with the boys kind of helps a little bit and it, it made her it made her smile so i am i've been waiting for them to spend more time together and so i really really enjoyed this episode even if i think the three children sneaking off into the mines to steal x kryptonite was the dumbest thing they could have ever freaking did <laughs> skipping school for one thing don't skip school kids i mean again i think it's kind of the nature of the life clock and lois to live is as much as they want to be perfect parents no parent ever can be perfect and you know Obviously, they found out that Jonathan was not the drug dealer, so therefore he is not expelled because the expulsion wasn't for the drugs. The expulsion was for being a presumed dealer, right? Um, so he's got to go back to school. Um, and obviously, he's not going to have a great time there. He was already struggling at school. He had zero friends. Um, his only real friends were on the football team, but even they all looked down on him and didn't think he was you know, he was the new kid. He wasn't the one and so now obviously we all, the school is gonna not treat him great but what i really hope is that we see more of him jordan and natalie sticking together and looking out for each other because neither of them have any friends right now jordan's only friend did seem to be sarah and she's obviously not going to spend time with them um and i think they can be there for each other plus your education is important to jonathan kent um but definitely these kids are struggling and because of everything else that's going on right now clark and lois don't have the time to sit with their sons and really talk it all through in the way that maybe would be healthy. And again, some of these situations do just need time to change and heal, but I'm, I'm still stressed, okay? Um, so, Talro is on the loose. Now, ultimately, I have to assume the next time we see him, he's gonna be doing good. You kind of saw him looking at Ali. I have to assume he's somehow gonna be trying to help, trying to prove himself to Clark by saving the world or something. There is a chance that he's going to be like, well, you, I don't want to prove myself to you. Why should I? I'm going to rule this world instead or do something evil. I don't think he will. I think it's kind of following that um, stereotype, which I'm not using in a negative way. It just is the only way I can think of to describe it, of someone who was a villain ultimately becomes someone you hang out with. And um, lots of shows have had this kind of character and it doesn't always work. Most of the time it works in shows where the morals are a little bit more grey a lot of the time. Whereas in this show I feel like the morals are quite black and white. Realistically so, not like super unrealistically. But, you know, he wanted to genocide humanity and he did kill a lot of people along the way. He tried to kill Clark and Jonathan, Clark and Jordan in particular. He actually he wanted to kill all of them because there was that when Clark agreed to go with him that time he was about to murder the whole family. Like, on a personal level he hurt them. On a wider level, he hurt Smallville. On a global level, he wanted to genocide humanity. That isn't someone I would ever want coming around for Sunday roast. Now, if I was Clark, I might say, well, look, I'll visit you in prison. Maybe we can get you, you know, a bit more furniture in here. Maybe a laptop that's not connected to the internet or whatever, you know, kind of try and give him a bit more comfort that if he earns it with good behavior and with occasionally helping us help. But the scale of his crime was so vast that I don't think it's gonna work if he just becomes Uncle Tal. Now, if that does happen, I will have to try and suspend my disbelief going forwards. Um, they destroyed the pendant, which is very good. But obviously she's like, there's another way. <laughs> I'm guessing it's Ali's plan that she's going to make herself so powerful, she can forcibly merge everybody. Like, if you're together, she could be like, you're merged. Um, Given that she is a merged person, of course she's going to think it's the right thing to do. The way she keeps flickering between the, oh, the old two versions of herself and this merged version, I think shows you that it's not stable and definitely not natural, not something that should be happening. She did have that moment of fear when it was happening, but she's still like, yep, going to do that to everyone. That's the plan. I love this plan. Um, it's very concerning. It definitely, she is unstable, but she's always been unstable and she was raised this way from a very small child. So yeah, I really don't know what's to come. I don't think Clark did anything wrong in trusting Talaro to help. I think he maybe did in having him bring flowers to Lois to try and say he was sorry. But we will see. It is messy and definitely it was playing on Clark's mind the fact that the brother he had in that other world, they were actually very close and like he was willing to sacrifice, like to help save Jonathan and everything. It just, it's just messy. And Ali's up to a lot of messy shit too. 
a reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my patreon a month in advance and thank you so much for watching.